we have been anxiously waiting for a speech. That is from our Holy Father, His Holiness, the Patriarch of Antioch, and the Supreme Head of the Universal Sri Orthodox Church. At this time, I respectfully request His Holiness to address the audience. Thank you. That's good, that's good. Dear brothers in Christ, Termini Mary, more severius, Koryakos Termini, the Archbishop of the Knanaya Archdiocese and the Chief Metropolitan, more Selvanos Ayub, Metropolitan of the region of North America and Europe, Barorigorios Koriakos, Metropolitan of Kalashiri and Malabar region. That's new addition. Kalashiri. More Unisus John Kawak, Patriarchal Assistant. Very Reverend Rabban Kore Episcopal. Reverend Achamare, Chamachamare, <laughs> beloved Knanaya Waisale Makale. How's that? Good? Dear brothers and sisters and children in the Lord, indeed, our Lord is very awesome, wonderful, and great who has brought us together this morning to celebrate together our faith, our unity, and our culture and identity. Our Lord is great for having preserved his church for many centuries, despite very difficult circumstances, very terrible persecutions he has been with his church because he promised to be with his church and we do all of us do feel that if it wasn't for our Lord's compassion and mercy we would not have been here today as a community of faith indeed we cannot thank him enough for being with us, all of us, as a community of faith. We, all of us together, belong to a very ancient and venerable church, a church that was established by the, by the Lord Jesus Christ on the faith of St. Peter, her first bishop, a church that was instrumental in spreading the message of the Holy Gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ to the ends of the world, a church that gave humanity quite a lot in terms of civilization, theology, knowledge, sciences, we all ought to be very proud of our church. And you, the Knanaya community in particular, have to be very proud of your roots, of your beloved city, Edessa, Orhoi, a great center of Christianity, of Syriac Christianity in the world. A city that was blessed by great people as, such as St. Ephraim or Ephraim, who taught in its famous school by the multitudes of the monks and the servants of God who occupied the hills around Urfa, Edessa. 
we are told that more than 300 monasteries existed around that city. A city was blessed by a person like a saint like Mor Yaqub of Orhoi, Mor Yaqub of Edessa, a great exegist, biblical interpreter, translator, canonist, and a great church father. You have all right to be proud of, the, of your roots. You have all right to, to boast about your great forefathers. But you also have the responsibility to be faithful to these great forefathers, great saints. You have a responsibility to maintain that relationship with your mother church, with the Holy See of Antioch. You have the responsibility to be faithful to the memory of the multitudes of church fathers and of martyrs who shed their blood for their faith. This year, as you know, we are commemorating the 100th anniversary of the genocide against our people, against your people, against the Syriac Christians, what we call Seifo, Seifo, which stands a Syriac word meaning the sword. And we refer to these years of 1915, 16, 17, 18 as the years of the sword, because by the sword we were killed. Hundreds of thousands of our people were martyred, became intercessors for us in heaven. And this year, 2015, marks the 100th anniversary of the beginning of that great tragedy of that genocide which was committed against our people in the former Ottoman Empire. We, members of this church and this community, are truly known and rightly so by the children of the martyrs. Our church is known as the martyred church. Anyone studying the church history, the history of our church, will come to the conclusion that the existence, the sheer existence of this church and community today is a miracle from God. In light of all the great persecutions that were raised against our church from the beginning of Christianity until today, and what happens today in the Middle East is but another chapter of this long history of martyrdom, long history of witnessing to Christ our God. Yet despite of all this tragedy, this death and destruction, hope can never leave us. Hope will always be in our hearts because hope is the fruit of our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. If we believe in the living Christ, the one who promised to be with his church, then we should not give, give up. If we, live, if we believe in the resurrected Christ, then we should know that we all will always be resurrected from our death, from our destruction, from our tragedies. That is the hope which keeps us going. And for that, we, since our installation as Patriarch of Antioch by the grace of God, we have been touring, visiting our communities around the world and many countries and meet, meeting with many dignitaries to spread the message that Christians in the Middle East should be allowed to exist there because that's where Christianity started. That our people who have been in our homeland, on our soil for thousands of years should not be uprooted from our land. On the contrary, we should be helped to stay there because we represent a fine aspect of life 
we represent a great nation and people who, who can be truly looked upon as people who spread love, peace, and harmony among others. These qualities, these attributes which are in great need for today's society. Peace, harmony, and love are very difficult to find today. But these are the basics on which we stand as Christians. These are the teachings of our Lord. How can we exist as a community without peace in our hearts, without love in our hearts, without harmony, with ourselves, with others, with God, and with nature, even with nature, yes. Dear brothers and sisters, it's my great pleasure to be with you today. And I thank you all, both their eminences, the reverend clergy, the committees, the association, and all those who worked hard to organize this family convention here in Chicago. On behalf of my brother, Mardin Sajjan Kawak, and very Reverend Rabban Joseph Bali, I would like to thank you for all the efforts you made. And I do not agree with Mor Salwano saying that you are late in receiving me because you have already received me long time ago in your hearts. I know that. <laughs> and then, how can I forget the great reception that was organized in Kerala, in Chingavanam, by His Eminence <laughs> Chief Metropolitan? and all the metropolitans of the church. The only thing I regret about that reception is that we made poor people, drivers, stand, uh, wait in their cars for hours and hours because we blocked the main roads in the area for many hours. <laughs> but I'm grateful to God and to the Knanaya community for that reception, which was really outstanding, historical, can never forget it. I will never forget it. At that reception, I came to know and to taste, to taste and to touch the, the love of the people for their church hierarchy, for their patriarch and for their servant. I, I came to see and to feel their the outpouring of their love, of their loyalty. And that humbled me. And I know, actually, I, I do not take that great reception and love personally, because I don't deserve it as a person. But I take it as geared and directed towards the holy throne of Antioch, the patriarchate of Antioch, which for many centuries, from the beginning of Christianity, nurtured, nurtured and embraced our people throughout the world, especially our Knanaya people in Kerala. For many centuries, at least since the beginning of the, since the middle of the fourth century, the presence of our church, of our patriarchate in India and Kerala could not have been any stronger and any uh, more uh, appropriate and suitable. Could not have been any better than the presence of the Knanaya community itself there. The Knanaya community in Kerala and in India was and continues to be the great representation of the patriarchate and also continues to be sign, symbol of this relationship between mother and a daughter. <laughs> no power in the world can change that because it's divine. 
no, no individual, no group of people, no community can change that, no matter how many court cases establish. <laughs> this relationship, spiritual, godly, ecclesiastical, cannot be interrupted or abolished by any human law. Yes, we respect every country's system. We respect every country's law, and we never ask our people to go against any law of any country because order and respect of civil authorities is a divine command. However, however, the existence, the identity, and the relationship of a community of faith cannot be challenged by any order, by any worldly order. No one can challenge that. Because that's something in the heart comes from God. No law, no court uh, verdict can affect that. I'm very happy to see our beloved Termini Mare. Sitting together, joking together, laughing. <laughs> and I know deep in their hearts, all of them, the four of them, Morse Ivanius is not here today, but he's also one of them. The four of them have the greatest love for their church and their Knanaya community. I have no doubt about that. <laughs> I have no doubt whatsoever. But sometimes there is difference of opinion. Sometimes we forget our mission as servants of Christ. We think we are the leaders, the presidents, the uh, governors, the rulers. No, we are the servants of the people. <clears throat> and based on that understanding of service, and that's Christian way of, of ministry, Christ was the servant. He came to serve, not to be served. And all of us, patriarch, bishops, clergy, that's our mission, to serve the people of, of God. It's not to make them servants for us, but rather to serve them. To many, Sylvester many mentioned that there is no church, there is no community, no archdiocese without the people. There is no bishop without the people. Yes, he's right. There is no church without the people. Patriarch and bishops do not make up the church. They complete the church. They make it whole. They represent Christ in the midst of his community. But without the community, there is no church. So having the greatest love for their community, for their church, sometimes they do not agree on everything. While that's their right to have different opinion, but at the end, the interest of the community comes first, the interest of the Ajdaz comes first, and they have to sacrifice, they have to compromise. Each of them. And I know at the end, that's what they will prevail. I'm very, very proud of them, four of them. I'm very happy to see them leading this beloved community. But I expect them also to do that in, uni in unity and in harmony and to set the example for the entire community. I have full confidence in the four of them. And I know they recognize each other's ministry and limitations and responsibilities. Morseverius is the Archbishop of the Archdiocese, of the one Archdiocese. It's only one Archdiocese. He is the Chief Metropolitan. And then more, more Gregorius, more Salvanus, and more Ivanius are the regional Metropolitans of these Archdiocese. They are in charge, in charge of their regions. 
However, when they come together, when they come together in the Metropolitan Council to discuss and to decide on issues related to the community, they do that together in unity, respecting each other and recognizing each other's authority. And of course, the Archbishop has a dignity, a higher dignity among the other bishops, the other metropolitans, because he is the Archbishop of the entire Archdiocese. But the Archbishop also has respect for the responsibilities and the, and the uh, jurisdiction of the other metropolitans in their respective regions. That's how it is. That's how it should be. That's how the Constitution is. And when this happens, when their eminences um, accept that and act up upon that principle, then everything will be running smoothly and no one of you will get in between the bishops and make them. <laughs> Of course, love you all. I know you all love your church and your community, and you want to, be, to see your bishops always together, smiling and laughing together, right? <laughs> Let me just tell you this. We are, we as a church, we are by the grace of God, not by our own uh, uh, righteousness. We are the great church. We have great history very clean history, very venerable church. We should be proud of it. And we should not allow our egos and our self, sometimes self-interest, come in the way of our unity, of our prosperity and progress. Termini, Severus Termini again mentioned forward, forward, forward three times. What's in Malayali? Benuta. Benuta. Three times. Yes, that is what we should be doing, looking forward. Forget the past. Not, forget the past doesn't mean, of course, to be, uh, to be ungrateful and faithful. No. We, how can we forget great people like, for example, Morkli, Mr. Mani, who led the church for many years? <laughs> we cannot forget great people in the past, but the past is only to open up the future for us. Look at the past to learn what to do for the future, what to do today for the future. The church is not going to be here only today. Church has been here for 2,000 years and will be here at, until the end of the world. And we, all of us, lay people, clergy, and especially bishops, patriarch, it's our responsibility to make sure that this church that this church continues to progress and to be forward-looking for generations to come. What we do today, even this meeting, it's not only for you to enjoy, it's not only for you to be spiritually filled, to be united, to come together. It's for your children, your grandchildren. You bring your children to show them what they should be doing in the future. This great church that we belong to, blessed by God's presence and led by his Holy Spirit, should always be faithful to the message of the gospel, to the message of the Lord, to be light that shines in this dark world and to be salt of this earth. That's who we are. Once again, I thank you all for organizing this reception, for inviting me to be with you, although for a few hours, but nevertheless, I cherish these moments, and especially I appreciate the presence of the eminences, especially Maurice Severius, who came on a short notice from, because he was busy in, uh, he was busy in administrative issues. And he came on short notes, and he has to go also tomorrow. I wish he could stay for a few more days. 
and, and work with Silvano Stermini and Rio Stermini on some issues here in, the, in this region. But his, but his eminence will come back again. He, I'm sure his eminence will come back again soon to take care of these issues so that the three bishops, the four bishops, work together on all issues in any part of the of the Knaanaya uh, Archdiocese. It is one Archdiocese, and it has to be taken care of by the four of them together. With, of course, uh, with preserving the dignity and the respect of, of each of them in, in their respective roles. Once again, thank you. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you many more times. And uh, I want you to do something for me. As you know, we are going through very difficult times. And we live in, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to make it sound dramatic, but we do live uh, at a great risk. Um, we get uh, bombs thrown around us every, almost every day, but still, we are determined to stay where we are, in our homeland, to be in Damascus, to be in Aleppo, to be in Qamishli. That's my hometown, Qamishli. The, thank you for the presentation, but the city was not pronounced correct. So um, we, are, we are in our homeland. We want to stay there, and we want you to pray for us, for your brothers and sisters in the Middle East, that we may continue to live and to witness to our faith. God bless you. May the prayers of the Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, Mortu Mashlihu, and all the saints be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you very much, Your Holiness, for your great speech. Now, I humbly request His Holiness to light the lamp to inaugurate the function. Monson Malikarel, please join with us. Monson Malikarel, please join with us. Thank you, Your Holiness. We're running out of time.